command avoidance from there, pathological slash extreme demand avoidance, and ethical case study apparently can special educational needs disability schools are denying a placement to children and young persons with a PDA diagnosis by uh, Richard Woods, a London Southbank University PhD student. Um, and this is a second video in a new collection of videos, either breaking down, uh, providing short introductions to piece of work or, um, or providing valuable kind of discussion points. So. Yeah, a bit about me. I am autistic. I am neat eligibility as PDA profile, but I'm not emotionally attached to it. And I actively reflect on how my values shape my understanding and construction of autism and of PDA. So yeah, my agenda is for at least increase of good quality scientific method based research and practice. And this is my interpretation of PDA literature and of PDA itself, and others might disagree. So I do have a few conflicts of interest. I'm not going to linger over this you can pause the page if you want to um so a brief introduction um yep i'm going to briefly outline the situation in kent um that is provides the case study for this video um exactly be covering who he's been discriminated against um the broader the broader context of pdo in the uk um some of pdo's controversies who exactly <laughs> Uh, who is it that is complex and i'm referring to both pda and autism here and then concluding with some reflection with some reflection points so yeah um about a month ago harry thompson on his facebook profile um put this post online and it's basically describing how apparently um someone he works with has discovered that apparently in Kent's special ed special increase sorry special education needs and disabilities schools are um basically denying education placements to children who has a PDA diagnosis, and most of these will be autistic children, because unfortunately PDA is mainly diagnosed in autistic children. Um, so apparently uh, Ken, for its, uh, special ed for its SEN schools, um, their admissions policies contain a line which they will not consider children with a PDA diagnosis. Um, so this person has apparently noted that these schools apparently check a cherry pick in certain autism profiles and accepting more kind of typified in quotation marks autistic children that might be considered less complex um, and Harry Thompson goes uh, is there being much discrimination going on um, so this side is me just basically highlighting these points um, I'd point out that most of the points I'll be discussing in the video are applicable to um, using PDA as a defense against false fabricated or induced illness um, kind of claims um, yeah, there's a connotation with this kind of language around kind of, um, like more or less complex versions of autism and stuff, because, um, it's kind of been denoted that PDA is a kind of complex presentation of autism, which, um, I will discuss things with later. So, um, yeah, we know from the government and uh, quite clearly provides a definition for which someone counts as being disabled uh, under the Equality Act in the UK. So um, this is literally taken from, the given, from a government website, and I'll read it out. So you you are disabled under the Equality Act um, 2010 if you have a physical or mental impairment that has a substantial and long-term negative effect on your ability to do normal daily activities. Um, what substantial and long-term mean? So substantial is more than a minor or trivial, e.g. it takes much longer than it usually would to complete a daily task like getting dressed. So long-term means 12, 12 months or more, e.g. kind of breathing condition that develops as a result of a lung infection, um, end quote. So, yeah. Uh, so... What does this mean then? So it would seem by that that if you have a PDA diagnosis, it must be um, sufficiently debilitating to um, warrant receiving a diagnosis. Um, so it would seem that people with a, these children with a PDA diagnosis are being discriminated against uh, in a case that is provided by Harry Thompson. Um, and it is obviously a great tragedy for the children um, and um, the caregivers involved in this. But there's also much more to unpick with this case study, which is why I've made this video. Um, so, yeah, so a bit broader context of how PDA is in the UK. So, at the moment, there's kind of a, a profile around PDA profile of autism um, in the UK. So, um, for example, many researchers are um, investigating PDA from their autism understandings. And that it's kind of these researchers will acknowledge that caregivers are highly motivated to take part in research. And the same people have obviously, again, not acknowledged their interest um, in the concept of PDA 
largely centered in the UK. It's a culture around concepts to the UK, and that over the last ten years in the UK, interest in PDA has um, sharply risen, and it has <laughs> substantially outstripped its research base. Um, and the research base is quite small and notoriously poor quality. Um, I've noticed, I've observed in one of my articles that campaigning efforts um, can need to people being on lookout for PDA and, and it is a potential source of bias. Um, so what this means is, is that um, PDA is mainly researched and defined by people who view PDA to be um, a profile of autism. And this is a highly circular process and it m means that there's a substantial risk of confirmation bias within those who are advocating and conducting most of um, most of PDA research. And this is pertinently considered kind of recent research results, which I'll cover in a few moments. So, yeah, um, PDA as a diagnosis and as a concept is substantially controversial, um, and it has been the case for about 20 years. Um, yeah, more recently, um, multiple independent parties have reviewed the evidence base for PDA and have concluded there's no good quality research to suggest what it is and what features are associated with it and have equally respected divergent opinion. And I'm referring to the Royal College of Psychiatry here. That's the British Psychological Society here. That's a recent systematic review. And that's NICE, which is the National Institute for Clinical Excellence. <clears throat> so these are like respected parties and not just random um, people who have reviewed the literature. Um, yeah, as I said previously, PDA has been um, it's been consistently challenged for about twenty uh, for about twenty years since two thousand two, um, from Lorna Wing uh, by herself and with Judy Girls. And there are three of the main schools of thought from the literature. So there's one that like PDA is a common mental disorder, or it's rebranded autism, or that PDA is not a distinct entity or disorder or syndrome or a distinct profile. It just represents a collection of um, features from accepted kind of categories or constructs. So where we're going from, so this is the, the recent research results that have come out within the last few weeks. And um, the top one here is that um, our results are therefore in agreement with um, the authors who question the validity of PDA as a distinct entity, um, which is quite important. <laughs> um, and this, um, the other research result I'm going to quote is, currently there does not seem to be a clear rationale to make it um, EDA or PDA had a um, separate subdivision of autism given the removal of clinical subtypes such as Asperger's syndrome from the DSM-5. Um, I'll just remove the references of what these ellipses are for. Um, however, anecdotally, clinicians who recognise um, PDA report that they um, find a clear distinction between autism and PDA. Um, in practice, it seems that clinicians are identifying a difference between the two, which does not seem to be translating into research. Um, I would point out that if the clinicians are identifying stuff which is not being seen in research, it would indicate that clinicians are potentially seeing results due to um, the bias held by the clinicians, i.e. the clinicians are seeing stuff due to their confirmation bias. Um, and I do discuss in other videos that those who are advocating for PDA as a profile autism will be as biased as anyone else is. Um, and there's good reason to be sceptical um, of their claims. Um, so... Yeah, I'm going to discuss a bit of um, PDA's controversies, and, and these kind of matter to kind of this case study. So, um, PDA has features that are associated with criminal acts, which I'll give examples in the next slide. But um, if you view PDA to be part of the spectrum, that means you're therefore associating these criminal acts with autism. Um, and PDA, can, um, when you consider what PDA is, um, it would logically and reasonably, predictably um, adversely impact a person's life chances. So, for example, who would wish to employ someone who has a pathological or extreme aversion to demands, or who would wish to provide an educational placement to a children young person who has a pathological or extreme of, um, aversion to demands, or request by others such as teachers um, or support staff? So, um, this is a side of some examples. These are literally um, items or questions from PDA screening tools or diagnostic tools. So, the first one is that um, the person has um, fantasi fantasizing, lying, cheating, or stealing, um, harassment of others. And kind of tar um, blame the targets a particular person, or I um, tell other people how how they should behave, but do not feel that these rules apply to me. So, yeah, the kind of um, features that being some of the features associated with video are relatively problematic, um, and can be quite off-putting for others. Um, more than that, and this is kind of important because um, those who are complaining about PDA um, 
that these children with PDA being uh, discriminated against by these Kent's special education e schools, they also seem to claim that PDA is a profile of autism. That's problematic because that assumes that PDA is not seen in non-autistic people. Yet we know that there's a, about a dozen different article um, research pieces of re- research that indicate that PDA is seen in non-autistic people. Um, there's a couple of um, studies which probably contain non-autistic people with, but we just can't be different due to the nature of the, these studies. And we also know that um, multiple kind of experts are uh, consistently saying that PDA is seen in non-autistic people. Um, yeah, and as I said previously, like, uh, for example, Harry Thompson, who provided this case study, um, he himself advocates for PDA to be part of the autism spectrum. And it does seem that um, the people that Harry Thompson are likewise discriminating against non-autistic people with PDA, um, which is a bit of an issue. <laughs> um, so we go back to this um, point about um, kind of typified autistic children um, who could be considered less complex, i.e. that PDA is a complex presentation. Um, yeah, I'm going to refer to um, other statistics and broader literature. So, for example, Claire Jim, who investigated kind of different educational experiences of um, autistic children with and without PDA, she found that there was no, st- no, no statistical differences between exclusions um, for autistic children with and without a PDA diagnosis or screening. And she also found a few group differences in the frequency of failed school placements. Um, and this is also kind of um, personally considered a recent kind of studies by Snyder et al. and Weiss et al., which I said, um, that basically indicates that um, there's no distinct difference between PDA and autism and the, or that there's no evidence to suggest that PDA is a distinct thing at all. Um, this matters because generally we know that autistic people are generally pretty quite atrociously by an autistic society. Um, so one could argue that um, that all autistic persons are arguably complex or perplexing. I'm not saying that we are, I'm just saying one can make the argument. Um, and this kind of matters because people who are tend to view PDA as being part of the autism spectrum um, are conceptualising PDA to have deficits and that the demand avoidance is rooted to um, issues um, within the individual. They're not actually considering the role the environment um, has in kind of um, causing demands and the actual avoidance features. So, uh, and this matters because um, modern autism understandings um, take a transactional stress-based approach to demand avoidance, I, as in um, the demand avoidance is not caused due to deficits located within the person. And um, this is a quote from the DSM-5, which is the main American diagnostic manual. And this is from the category C for its autism criteria. So um, symptoms must be present in the early developmental periods uh, in brackets, and this two, provides two exclusion criteria uh, cases, So, but may not become fully manifest until social demands exceed limited capacities or may be masked by learned strategies in later life. <clears throat> so what this means is, this is literally uh, saying that um, a person can uh, hide their autism features until the demands or pressures placed on them exceeds their ability to cope with it. And that is literally from a transactional stress perspective. What this means is one can ask, is PDA a complex or confusing matter to PDA profile of autism supporters? Which I think is a reasonable question. So um, I'm going to conclude this video by um, asking these questions. So, um, are Kent S&D um, social educational needs or disability schools apparently discriminated against children and persons with um, PDA diagnoses? Next question is, um, is the situation in Kent S&D schools um, simply not accepting children and persons diagnoses predictable? Uh, is the situation in Kent S&D simply not accepting... Oh, wait, um, I should get rid of that one. Just ignore that one. Um, what is the purpose of a PDA diagnosis if it does not provide um, educational strategies or help um, provide the educational placement? And um, are PDA um, profile autism supporters at least part, partially responsible for heedlessly exposing um, these vulnerable children and young persons to be treated um, this way by Kent's special education um, um, schools? Um, and yeah, I mean, are PDA profile autism supporters discriminating against non autistic persons with PDA? And um, again, is PDA a complex or a confusing matter for? for PDA profile of autism supporters. So I think these are all questions which we can reasonably ask and should be reflecting upon um, with this case study. Um, so for me, this is just my contact detail. So like my email address, my Twitter handle, my research gate profile, which has most of my research gate, uh, sorry, most of my research publications um, fully available. Um, and these are just the references. There's a 
six sides, I think. Um, the references on, I'm not going to loiter on them long because you should be able to pause them if you want to access them. Yeah, this is the second to last slide, so um, I'm going to end the video in a moment. So I'm going to say thank you for watching, and I hope you see, uh, I hope you watch the future videos and stuff. Um, so yeah, thank you. Bye.